Welcome to EuroPCR 2023. My name is Ariel Rogin. I am from Israel. I'm a professor from the Technion and I work at the Hadera Medical Center. Together with me, there are two good friends, Jim Nolan from the UK and Matt Gisada also from Israel. And we will talk about radiation, how to protect ourselves and how to live better and for a longer time and to continue working in our profession. So first I will address, uh, ask you, Jim, can you tell us how radiation works in the cath lab and the, the ABCs of how to try and stand in the cath lab in understanding the way that radiation works? Please, Jim. Okay, so the, the cardiac lab is potentially the most radiation intense environment uh, that anybody works in in the medical profession. Um, and the source, the radiation source, the X-ray source and the primary beam are intense X-rays. That's not what we as operators and lab staff are exposed to. We are exposed to scatter radiation from the patients. And if we are not careful, we receive large doses of detrimental radiation. And over a long career, 30 years in the cath lab, that can have serious adverse effects on, on the health of the staff working in the lab laboratory. However, it is possible to control that by careful technique, by appropriate use of shielding, equipment setup, and new innovations that are already in practice or will be with us soon. And if you are careful and well-educated and you understand what you're doing, your annual exposure can be very low and in fact less than the exposure changes that you would get from moving around to different areas within your country or perhaps working in the airline industry. So <clears throat> it's a radiation intense environment, but it does not have to be detrimental if you are technically accomplished. So as a teaching point, uh, number one, if the radiation source comes from below the patient and there is radiation that is scattered from the patient, uh -huh. where should we as operators stand? Okay, so the, the, the radiation uh, uh, levels are highest close to the patient. They are higher underneath the table and they are modified by the gantry angulation that you, 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 you take your pictures with. So whenever the X-ray source is close to you as an operator, for instance, in the LEO cranial position or a PA caudal, then you will receive more radiation and you will receive more radiation to the left side of your body as with most of us work on that side of the table and you will receive more radiation to your legs. And so you have to optimize your protection with under table shielding, leg shields, eyeglasses to protect your eyes uh, and appropriate over table shielding also. Excellent points because what we emphasize always and also in this session that we had is to stand as far as possible from mm -hmm. the patient to use all the lead uh, uh, shielding that is possible and form a wall of protection from the patient mm -hmm. and to try uh, and avoid steep angulations. Again, for diagnostic purposes, we should do all the angulations. But when we decide to do a PCI, then we should choose those angulations that are with less radiation. Indeed both less to the patient and because if the patient receives more radiation, Always. there is more scatter. Always remember also that if the patient has a big BMI, for example, he will omit more radiation. So this is more radiation to the operator. Just, we have to... Just on those points, Ariel, I, I, when I do a diagnostic, I don't do loads of diagnostic angiogram now with CT, but if I do one, if the catheter is stable in the coronary, I stand right at the far end of the table. So I'm... A, a long distance from the source. We can all do that, take a step to the right, two steps to the right, and you will be in a less intense that's, zone. That's a great thing. <coughs> Other things that we are talking about is the frame rate, for example, of fluoroscopy. If we decrease the frame rate from 15 to 7.5, we decrease significantly the amount of radiation. Another uh, point is that if we use the store fluoro images, instead of cine, we reduce the radiation by six to 10 mm. times, that it's huge. And again, we should always, because cataracts are related to radiation, we should always use our lead glasses. In the Euro 2023, we also talked about modern uh, uh, options that we have, and they are coming because we said that the radiation comes from below. There are several uh, companies that may reduce the scatter radiation by shielding the patient or shielding the radiation source. And this is uh, something that we are all waiting to see that uh, it's really welcoming. What we also talked about is a simple way to reduce radiation. What we do in many centers in, in around the world is simply to put a lead 
a, a skirt on top of the patient. So we prepare the femoral approach, we put the lead skirt, we then prepare also the radial approach, and we do the procedure when there is a lead a skirt on the patient, and this can reduce significantly the omitted radiation mm -hmm. that the operator is receiving. So this is really a simple method. We r did several randomized trials comparing this to other uh, systems and to a placebo with nothing, and we found significant reduction. I will uh, um, uh, recommend the audience of this uh, uh, session to, to go and look at this, and really it's very cheap and very efficient. And the key to that is education, isn't it? It's understanding that the radiation, it's not the primary beam that is hazardous unless you put your hands in it. It's the scatter that comes out of the patient, particularly the patient with the elevated BMI. And you need to educate yourself. If you are going to work in that environment, you need to understand what is going on. Exactly. Education, education, education. Together with Jim, we wrote a paper on heart last year that is really a, a emphasizing all aspects with several uh, uh, points to take care of. One of the things that we are worried as a community in cardiology and interventional cardiology is the number of women that are doing this uh, procedure. We know that nowadays about 50% of me all medical students are women. But when we look at the numbers or the percentage of women doing interventional cardiology or electrophysiology, this is really very, very uh, small numbers. Uh, with us is Dr. Magdi Saada, who wrote an excellent uh, review for Europace, and this year also the EAPCI published a consensus document on pregnancy and uh, radiation. Uh, our paper is called, uh, is this a real concern or just a myth? So Majdi, what can you tell us about this topic that is so important? Yeah, actually it's a very interesting uh, topic about the disparity between males and females in the interventional cardiology field. Um, and it's all about, comes back to, again to the edu education and awareness about um, uh, the facts and uh, radiation doses. So uh, even though we have scarce data about people, uh, female interventional cardiologists engaging with the uh, uh, cat lab and during their pregnancy and breastfeeding periods, uh, we can, well, the, the data shows definitely that it's well below the threshold that is uh, dose limited uh, um, in, in, from different uh, societies, as well as that we can see um, uh, that um, those follow-up, the data, the normal, the pregnancy was normal and the follow-up was pretty normal with no uh, uh, consequences. Uh, this is one topic. The other thing that was highlighted in just a recent published uh, review in the Euro intervention was the highly variable uh, regulations among different countries. So we can see as the least restrictive countries, for example, in the USA, which they are allowed up to 10 male silver during the gestation period, while in other countries in Europe, if you are a female interventional cardiologist, you're not allowed actually to engage in the cath lab uh, during the gestation period. So uh, I think this topic should be addressed more. We, it's very important, again, to the awareness and to know the data. And I think we need more research in that field to, to further uh, elaborate on the dose and the range and, uh, and, and, and all the consequences that the woman, did, uh, it, it, it bears, it's a barrier for women from engaging this field. And is it really true or not? We still have to fill um, more further research. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the huge variation in regulatory frameworks tells you that things are not well understood. The data we have is that it's probably safe to work in the cath lab. Doses under uh, lead aprons to the abdomen are often completely unrecordable. However, I think it's an individual decision that each person so should, you know, each pregnant woman will reach in consultation with their own team, their radiation protection officer, and you should respect people's individual decisions. For sure. But there is an issue that there is not enough data. Mm -hmm. We know from animal models that you need huge amounts of radiation to create issues of, yeah. of, of pregnancy. Uh, and the levels that we are exposed in the cath lab are much less. And there are several reports of women working with two skirts, for example, mm -hmm. with a dosimeter. And um, these... Uh, uh, Reports show that the pregnancies were normal. But again, this is an issue that has to be uh, answered by the regulatory bodies because it's 
very w weird, like uh, what is the amount of dosage that is allowed in, in a cath lab for, in different countries, mm -hmm. that if you are a woman working in a country uh, in Hungary, you're not allowed to go into the cath lab. But the same woman, if she's working in Canada or in the US or in other countries in Europe, she's allowed. So this is really a topic. Uh, and this is a major barrier. We know it from, for, for women to go into the, our profession. And, uh, but I said, OK, this is something that is raising up the, the, the public awareness. And we should address this. I guess, I guess you can say that the data that exists is that it is safe to work in the, in the cath lab. Yeah, as long as we follow the ALARA principle, which stands for uh, as low as reasonable achieved and uh, proper shielding during the work in the cath lab, yeah. the data shows that's really safe. OK, the last thing I wanted to emphasize also is the uh, orthopedic problems that we are suffering. Again, this emphasizes the use of correct lead aprons the measurements of the uh, and testing the lead, the lead apron um, is not uh, has any cracks, and to stand straight and not to bend in the cath lab, so you will have more pressure on your uh, uh, spine. And last thing is maybe to try uh, in order to avoid stress on your hips to step on the fluoro or cine uh, to rotate between the legs and not always to do yeah. this. Uh, Oh, also, Ariel, there are some exciting and uh, innovative new solutions to radiation scatter within the cath lab that are on the horizon. Some of them are in production now, and you know I know uh, of one cath lab in the UK that has the new um, motorized shielding system that creates a, a cone around the patient. So, you know, the, there is the opportunity, I think, going forward to further limit exposure within the lab. Yes. The dream is maybe to work without any lead at all, so we'll, do, we'll have no orthopedic problems. And I still think that we're a little bit far from that, but this is maybe in the next or next year meetings. So, Jim, Majdi, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed. We'll meet you again and talk about this topic. And it's important to keep safe by doing several steps that are really very simple. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.